All right, so ladies and gentlemen, if you are joining me, slow down, Josh. Jeez, this guy is fast. I can turn up your light, sorry. I just need to turn it up. I know you like it. I don't know why. It's, oh, maybe because of the battery's going out, dude. Yeah, it's going out. Anyways, I wanted to, let me get a, let me get a different battery. I can't stand that flickering down here. It's gonna get a little brighter, Josh. Oh. Hold on, guys. Josh is like, he's fast. He don't wait for me, man. Let's see what he got. You can't fix it without a light now. <laughs> there we go. Is it brighter? Yeah. I was saying, maybe it won't flicker on me now. All right, perfect. Yeah, it was the battery. So, what we have here is you see Josh is actually soft tipping it with a 3 8 tool. This is a dent craft tool, and he's using a factory opening. And you see this, this crease dent, he's starting from this side over. Now we're gonna put some heat on it in a little bit in the next pass, but he's gonna get the, the meat out. What am I saying? And see how he's got a leverage? So here's some of the do's and don'ts. Don't have your tool closer here and more in there, right? If you do that, you're gonna lose the leverage, you're gonna lose power. You see how he's using the 60, 30, 60, 40 rule or 70, 30 rule, that he's got majority of that tool outside the focal point of where his leverage is at, and he's going to win, right? He's going to get that leverage that he wants for that aluminum. Now, some of you were going, I don't hear the heat gun going, or do you have you use heat? Yes, we do. We have this heat here. We haven't used it yet because it's cooperating to a point where we don't have to change you know, let's get scientific -y, the molecules in the friggin' aluminum. But right now, he's, he's bringing up the main part of that, of that dent. Now, Josh is looking at it. I think that, yeah, he's looking at it the correct way. See how we're looking at it this way? He's looking at it this way. If you look at, your, here's the do's and don'ts again. If you're looking at it like this, this is the wrong way to do it if you're using reflection. Because you see the lightning bolt? That means the, your reflection or the way you're looking at it is the wrong way. The way Josh is looking at it is this way. You see how he's looking at it going with the dent? And this is a traveled crease, you can see that. So that's what Josh is doing. He's on his fourth week here, right? Going into what, second day in the fourth week, right? Now Josh, what he did is he lives in Colorado. He came back, he came in May for two weeks and he came back uh, last week for his second two weeks. Was the light board like this cost? That's about, what was that, Josh? Like five, $600, that, that light? Absolutely. Not including the battery? So this is from a Limident. You can switch the lines, you can, or you can switch the lens back and forth. You can get this at AnsonPDR.com, Alimident.com. There's other ones like StuckyTools.com. So you see me have both those light systems. This tool is made from Dentcraft, and you can also purchase it at Anson. That's where I got it. I got it from Anson. It is a strong tool. Look how, look how strong that 3 8 tool is. I don't think there's anything stronger on the market than this 3 8 Dentcraft. And because it fits in the factory opening. Can we see his leverage? Okay, sure. Well, you, it's kind of hard because you can't... That is his leverage right there, right? But you can't see inside the panel because... The block. I don't think we can see it now. It's too dark right there. But this is, oh, he's saying they want to see the uh, focal point. Okay, yeah. So there you go. That is the factory opening. Look at that, dude. That's freaking legit. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, what else we got here? Anybody else have any questions? Oh, look at this guy trying to, trying to, I'm telling you, dude, that's a challenge. And look at that, look at this pinpointing. He's gonna probably have to knock down sooner or later because look how tight that, that area is. What tap down do you like, Josh? Okay, so Josh likes the Galaxy. He likes the Galaxy. Sorry for all the 
you know, optical stabilization doesn't work with the app, live app of YouTube. Otherwise, it would be way more steadier. I don't think you need a heat gun. I, I don't think you need uh, either, dude. So, uh, is he using rubber tip or metal? He's actually, right now, he's using a rubber tip because he's just getting the bulk out. What I have here, check this out. I've got a metal tip ready for him. Okay, Josh, I would tap that down, like right in this area right here, okay? But when he's getting ready to do his next pushing series, I'm probably going to have him switch to this. It's like a like a, a mini R4, right? And that is steel right there. So he's gonna use that one. And that's probably all he'll need. He won't really use a sharp tip. So the do's and don'ts. Don't keep going without knocking down tension. And this is what he's doing here. He's just applying tension, tapping down the outside tension. In case you're wondering, that is not a Dentime paddle. That's just a Dentime branded paddle. That is, paddle is from Anson as well. That's a Purple Heart paddle with leather. That is a VIP base. One of the, it's probably one of the best fat bases. Actually, Ultra has a good one too. Um, but this is a very comfortable foam grip. And one more time at the light section. Oh, forgot to, forgot to mention, right? Here is, here is the Carbon Tech hood stand, tailgate stand, door hood, I guess door stand too, if you want to call that too, if you want to do that. But yeah, that is a really good, this has got a hard shell on top of it. It's canvas underneath and it's all made out of carbon fiber, pretty much it's, and, it's, and it collapses. So if you're looking for a really good hood stand. Good job, Josh. Nice job. So next series, we're gonna switch the tip and we're gonna go metal. Now, do's and don'ts. Let me switch up, okay? Let me see, let me do the switch up. Do's and don'ts. Uh, when you have a crease, it's very tempting for you to go like, let's say it creases this long. It's very tempting for you to put a glue tab over the whole thing. It's very tempting for you to go too fast. Go smaller sections, right? Smaller sections you go, the cleaner you go, and the faster you go. If you try to whip through it, I guarantee you, when you turn your tool, I mean, you turn your board, which is a tool or accessory. When you turn your board, you cross check, you're gonna see all these lumps, right? You're gonna see these, what we call in the industry called zipper marks, right? These, these up and down waves, that's because you did not basically touch your pushes. I like to use glue pulling uh, crease tabs and that helps me save a lot of the push marks you know, from doing that and it slows you down. So remember, don't go too fast on creases. Take your time, go, go very, very shallow, very short, short okay? Uh, does that tap down have a metal end or a soft end? Uh, the beginners find that metal tips always slip, whereas my candle one is beautiful. Now, let me switch up, okay? It is a plastic. This is called the Galaxy. And we put a cap over that to keep to prevent the slipping. But when he wants to go more precise, he'll use this one right here. So, and that's the Galaxy Peak. I really like it a lot. Now, go ahead and take that tool out for me, please, Josh. Make one more pass with it? All right, make one more pass. Josh says, I want to make one more pass, and then we're going to put the heat on it with, with this right here. Which side are you going, left or right? Okay, cool. So Josh says, I'm going to make one more pass, which is great because he's breaking down some of that, that depth in there. And this is aluminum. Right, it's an aluminum panel. <laughs> Everyone always, at least the newbies, misjudge how complex this can be. And stay, go far, get that far left part right there, Joshy. Yeah. So he's going to be here a while. Right? I don't know how long we're going to be here, but I, want, I do want to put some heat on it. We're going to 
show how we're using this tip right here. And look at that leverage point again, if you're just joining us. Look at all the leverage he's got by that tool hanging over the focal point, right? Where he's, where he's pushing down from. If the tool was started right here, the handle started here, he'd lose. He would not be able to get as clean. He wouldn't have as much power. He wouldn't have as control, leverage, all that good stuff, which means you wouldn't have a clean repair, all right? So he's just, again, trying to bulk up some of that little bit. If you guys are watching, you, you want to sectionize. I call lines of discipline. So the do's and don'ts, again, don't go too fast, right? Because you're just going to create more work, and you could have prevented that. So this is just a little taste of what we do here at the, at the training with, at the shop. This tool is fantastic. That Dentcraft tool is legit. You can also put, by the way, you can also, let me go to my thing. He's, he's going to keep, just in case you want to side load or something, right? Oh, let me go to this one here. Let me go to this one. So this, this tool, if Josh wanted to make this wide for some reason, but not now, maybe he wanted to side load. This Dentcraft tool has an option for an extension, right? You put it in there and you can squeeze in it. You don't have to do that, so. But that is an option too as well with those handles, Dentcraft. I didn't know that for years. So maybe, maybe uh, you didn't either, but probably a lot of you did. So that is some of that. Here's some different tools we would use. Tips on, this is a tap down tip. That's a VIP 3.0, that's an R5. Right, this is Anson tips. These work really good too. Uh, all the VIP, Peewee, uh, ooh, match grade, extensions. Yeah, we use it all over around here. How are we doing, Josh? Yeah. How can you get rid of the zippers? Oh, that's a good question. How would you get rid of them, Josh? If you had zipper effects, what do you think you'd have to do? Start by trying to clean up each section first. Yeah. So you don't show yeah. much of a zipper. Exactly. And then go in. So, no increments. Yep. So if you had zipper, let's say you had a zipper mark from right here over. I, or the whole thing was zippered. You would, you would do small sections, ladies and gentlemen, OK? You'd either put a glue, pole, glue tab on it, like a crease tab, and then bring it all up, right? Bring it, bring it all super high, and then tap down. But zipper effects are caused from going too fast. I'm gonna say that again. If you have zipper effects, it's because you're going way too fast, okay? And you're not concentrating on a small section. You're going, you see the whole thing, you wanna be disciplined, but you end up going too fast, okay? Hey, I appreciate that. Unvaccinated, I like, I like that. That's his YouTube channel name. Nice, okay. Uh, Outlawed911, thanks for the questions too, appreciate you, okay. Uh, you see how he slipped? Why'd you slip, Josh? Why'd you slip? I didn't slip off the Oh man, why would you slip then, I'm sorry. Yeah, look at Josh, he's like, I didn't slip. Why? Okay, if someone slipped, why would someone slip on a, on a tap down? Because they're not squared up with Right, right, yep. My correction, Josh did not slip, his paddle slipped off of his tap down. Yeah, yeah. Can you fix a zipper with a rod or just glue pull? You can do rod, but you have to, you have to actually overlap your pushes, right? So it's kind of like halfway on where your last push was and halfway off where your next push is at. That's how you connect it. And that's why you want to go super slow. That's why I actually, I prefer uh, glue pulling most of the time when I do creases. Aluminum is going to be tougher when you have a deeper dent, okay? So anyways, It's actually like two creases in there, like a pit. Let me show you. Like, look. So you have a, 
crease right here. Can I use your tap tail? So you have a crease here, and then you have a pit here, and then another one right here. So this is the deepest area right here. So I'm not going to do it for Josh because he knows, but we're going to... Yeah, and then you got a crown down here. You got a little, like, look, look how I turn my board, right? Oops, let me, something's not on here. There we go. So you see a low here, a little bit of pinch here. And this is the proper way Josh is actually seeing it. I couldn't get in his eyesight, but this is how he's seeing it. You see how the depth of that? Now, if he was going to glue pull it, he would put a tab, a crease tab, starting here. Not here, where everyone places a tab because you end up leaving a fat, deep low here. Does that make sense? Okay. Anyhow, we're going to go, we're going to practice his pushing because he hasn't really pushed aluminum this deep yet. So we're going to let him go ahead and push because he's good enough. I was like, Josh, you're going live, man. You're good enough. Okay. So we're going to put this one on. And we're going to put some heat on that mofo. One thing I like about this heat gun is you can control the heat, right? So I don't want it too hot. I don't want it too cold. And then I'm going to get a temperature gauge, right? Don't want to get too hot. Yeah, yeah, he's got a temperature gauge right there. 124, yeah, we want about... On aluminum, probably between 120, 130 to 140, I'd say, yeah, as possible. Just doing small dents and dings. Yep, so just take your time. Anytime you get a zip, zipper effect, learn. Oh, man, I lost it. Mary called me, and it died, dude. <laughs>